Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Alex, the Comic Corner. Thank you so much for clicking play on this video. We've got a smorgasbord of a haul for you today, and I've got a sneak peek for next haul. There's a grail in that box, but we're not going to be talking about it or showing it on this video. Um, we've got a haul. We've got Golden Age. We've got Modern. We've got magazine size figures, videos. It's pretty much all here, so hopefully you guys are excited. Here we go. As always, you guys, check out the Shortbox app. It's the easiest way to buy and sell graded comic books online. It's an awesome app. You will not be sorry for downloading it. Please use the link in the description below to download your free app today and begin browsing the amazing selection of comics that they have. All right, first up, I was blessed with an act of kindness, an A-OK, -okay, and I got from Callisto Freak. He's an eBayer, and he also has an Instagram channel, but it goes by Callisto Freak on one word on eBay. And he sent me all of these 1960s cartoon runs, so I'm really happy to have those. Be definitely checking out these. Just nostalgic, awesome cartoons. Really fun. And he threw in this. He said, it was worth sending. It's better than trash condition, like better than pitching it in the trash, sending it to me. I appreciate it. Really cool cover. Um, it's missing an ad page. It's got a missing back cover. Uh, but either way, um, it's an early Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman number 37. I'll definitely take it. He does a really cool job of grading uh, the book on the back and showing the values. So this one would definitely be in the 0 0.5 range and it'd be lower than good. It would be poor condition. Um, as you can see, there's lots of chipping up here, but it's, it's cool. I mean, the majority of the cover is still there and it's pretty awesome. So really happy and, and thankful that Callisto Freak thought of me and sent me this really nice Get, uh, act of kindness. I think he really wanted to send me these uh, videos so that I could peruse those and just see the 1960s cartoons. And then he threw in this Wonder Woman number 37. Heck yeah, I'll take this. Thank you so much. Great cover. I really do appreciate it. Thanks, Callisto Freak, uh, for that. I was in a V stock, and all the rage is about VHS tapes. Um, Dream to Real on Instagram used to only do like Silver Age and then mostly golden age and then he started posting nothing but sealed videotape so i picked up a sealed videotape uh, this has never been opened out of the package it's the second uh, tomb raider the cradle of life brand new sealed in the package i thought i'd jump on board and at least pick this one up because it was the only one in there that was sealed and i thought it was kind of neat um, if these things are going to blow up, at least I have something in the genre, gaming, collectibles genre, that um, is pretty cool. So here is that. I'm happy to have this. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, to be honest. Um, I don't even collect. I don't even really want to collect videotapes. They're bulky. Um, I don't even want to grade this thing. <laughs> so basically, I don't know why I bought it, but. It was an impulse buy, it was there, it was cheap, and so I jumped on board. Another thing, but this is, is something that I have wanted for a long, long time. So I'm kind of getting all the collectibles out of the way, and then we'll get to the comic books. But this is something that I've wanted for a long, long time, ever since I was a little kid in 1989, the Christmas of 1989. Story time, folks. I was, it was Christmas at my grandparents' house, and I was opening up what I knew was an action figure, and I, all the only action figure I wanted was a 1989 Batman figure. It was all that I wanted, and I opened it up, and I saw the stars at the top, and I saw the gold card on the back. Opened it up, and it was the Joker. I was like, it's awesome. I'm grateful, but I really wanted Batman. Batman was hard to find in my area, in, in, in the Illinois area, in the Missouri area. It was just not to be found and it was just sold out everywhere i mean my dad my mom my aunt everybody called everywhere trying to find this figure toys r us walmart blah blah blah. they tried to find it uh, probably jacks back in the day if you guys remember jacks they called everywhere and they couldn't find it i did end up getting one at one point but it was much much later and i was able to find a carded batman from 1989 very very nice condition except for this bottom corner that's the only real damage on this figure and i do collect this um toy biz run of of superhero figures the dc super superhero ones and i was really happy to to find this uh, it was 19 dollars at a half price books and so this is like 
kind of a childhood dream relived. I was so happy to have this. Now, I've seen other figures. There's a dealer, local dealer in town that has one. There's a local hobby shop that had one, and they just weren't in the condition that I really felt like buying. They were only like 20 bucks. I didn't really feel like buying them. Uh, this one looked really nice. There was also an antique mall probably a while back that maybe was like 20 to 30 bucks, but this one fit all the parameters of a figure that I wanted. It was the right time, right place, and so I'm glad to have found this at a Half Price Books in St. Louis. So if you peruse Half Price Books in St. Louis, you may have seen this one. At that same Half Price Books, I was looking through their plastic bin, which has the more expensive comics. This was $7.50. It was Rocketeer number one, the Dave Stevens Rocketeer. And the nice thing about this is it's in pretty darn nice condition. It's probably about that 8.5 to 9.0 range. 750. There's a lot of hype around the Rocketeer. Now, it wasn't the Star Slayer number two, I believe, is what the issue is. I've been kind of on the lookout for that book, and it's probably one that I've passed up a million times. But this one, um, easily recognizable, and was happy to find this for 750. I think it probably goes for more than that, but it doesn't matter. It was just one of those buys where I was like, yeah, 750, I'll do that for sure. Then, I went back because I wanted something to read, so I went back in the like the trade paperback area, and this is the Half Price Books on Delmar in St. Louis, and so if you know that store, you know that they've got um, a separate section for their trade paperbacks, and I I found this one first, which I was like, okay, I guess it's a graphic novel, but for ten bucks I found New Mutants. Uh, so this is Marvel, uh, Marvel Graphic Novel Number Four, the first appearance of the New Mutants. So it was ten bucks. It's a big old crease right there, but I mean for ten dollars, I was like, heck yeah, I'll buy that for ten bucks. So I was happy to find this. It was in their trade paperback. So if you're ever at a half price books and you're really not impressed with what they have in their comic bins, maybe peruse their um, their graphic novels and let me know if you find anything. Found another book in their graphic novels, and this is Green Lantern number 20. This is Jessica Cruz um, cameo appearance and there's a lot of hype around um, Jessica Cruz, the Green Lantern, the HBO Max show that they're producing. So I was happy to have this. Could care less if it really does anything or not. Just thought it was a good deal. So that was my half price books find. Found Rocketeer. Really nice Batman figure. First cameo appearance of Jessica Cruz or one of the cameo appearances of Jessica Cruz and then first appearance of New Mutants Marvel um, graphic novels number four so I thought that was really good deals it was uh, probably not exactly what I wanted to buy there not what I wanted to find there I'm kind of always hoping that I'd find like just some big key for for a cheap price who doesn't hope for that but anyways that's what I found that's what I picked up at half price books nothing insane or nothing crazy so on to the next shop that I went to at one point in my travels I went to a shop called Twilight Comics in Belleville Illinois so on the eastern side of St. Louis on the Illinois side of St. Louis and I found oh man I was looking for new books I was looking for like Superman son of Kal-El I was looking for Robin they just they only buy books for their pull customers which is completely understandable um, they really didn't have any extras for the general public so i was like okay fine whatever i'll just peruse your back issues i found this amazing spider-man number 10 j scott campbell variant i was happy to find that anything j scott campbell black cat it's definitely worth a pickup for me as, especially if you're only paying like cover price or less then i also found remember when ultimate x a couple years ago was the big ticket item for uh, the Jimmy, whatever his name was, Logan's son uh, from the Ultimate Universe. I was looking for that issue, but I did find this really nice Art Adams Ultimate X number two. And this is the th third printing or, oh yeah, third printing variant edition. So this is a nice, nice Arthur Adams, Art Adams variant of that. And I was like, heck yeah, I'll pick it up. I think it was only three bucks. Maybe this one was only three bucks. I, I remember they were, weren't, were not expensive at all. And so those are the two books that I picked up there. One other modern book that I picked up recently, I completely didn't know that this was coming out. And so as soon as I saw people like posting about it or whatever, I just went on and pre-ordered it on, um, so I, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't have to worry about calling places. It was like a couple dollars extra for shipping, but it was like cover price plus a few dollars for shipping. I thought it was worth it. 
It was this Deathstroke Inc. number one, the Adam Hughes variant. I think that's a really nice Adam Hughes variant uh, with Black Canary on it. And this is one of those covers where a lot of his artwork lately, um, to me personally, is like I could take it or leave it. Now there's some of those um, independent variants that have come out, exclusive variants or store exclusives that have really been blowing up on the secondary market. This was one of those ones that I saw it and I was like, yeah, that's a pretty cool. Now he, he did uh, use the uh, Supergirl face on this and Supergirl hair. And it's also uh, what you would know as the uh, Betty face from Betty and Veronica face and hair. And it's also the Catwoman face uh, with the Supergirl hair. So I'm being a little bit facetious, but as you know, um, a lot of his characters look very, very similar. He's got that, icon, you know, not a recognizable art style with a dark uh, black eyeliner and just really, really nice art. I, I'm a huge, huge fan of Adam Hughes and I was happy to pick this up and I didn't want to miss out, so I definitely pre-ordered it so it would be shipped, sent to my house. So happy with this Deathstroke Inc. number one with the Supergirl face and hair. Uh, with the black cap costume on. It's also the um, Zatanna face uh, with the Supergirl hair. So just wanted to let everybody know that. Oh, it's also the Sabrina, the Teenage Witch hair. Um, so lot, lots of similarities in everything that Adam Hughes does, but it's that um, signature style that we like so much. Same place that I got all of the pre-code horror books. He had a bin of other books in the place. There's a lot of photo covers, a lot of Looney Tunes type stuff. And I found these two for really cheap. I think they were both five or six bucks a piece. And I was like, yep, I'm going to go ahead and do those. And so I bought them both. This is High School Romance, number 22. It's a Harvey comic. Just a cool, good girl, you know, um, 1954 Harvey comic. Really nice pre-code romance book. And I know Mercenot and some of the guys from like Tales from the Flipside talk about these romance books. And of course... A lot of people talk about romance books. I know Drashir's comics, he, he talked a lot about romance books and kind of uh, Mercenot opened my eyes to these type of books. Great cover art. And of course, Collecto 6 probably has some of these great ones as well. I've got some um, in the private collection as well or the personal collection, the PC, if you will. And then the other one was this Vince Coletta cover. This is the best cover in this run, so I was happy to find this one. Not that I was searching for it or anything like that, but someday people are gonna be like, wow, that's the one you gotta get. That is the Archie 50 of True Secrets from Atlas 1954. That's the cover you need to get. And I picked it up for like six bucks. So I'm really happy didn't, I didn't pass this one up because this is easily the best cover in the run. Look it out, look, look it up on like mycomicshop.com. Look up the run True Secrets Atlas from the 50s. And you'll probably agree with me that this is the best cover in that entire run. Vince Coletta cover, True Secrets, number 25 from Atlas. Yeah. For five or six bucks, I would definitely pick this up every single time because I don't want to run into a situation where it's like, you didn't buy the True Secrets 25 when it was sitting there for five bucks in the bin. And I was like, Mm, I did that with an Archie 50 at one point. I was like, oh, I really like that cover, but I'm not going to pay 200 bucks for it. Little did I know that's like a $2,000 to $5,000 book. I mean, it's a crazy, crazy collectible book. I've learned my lesson on if, if a book looks great and I like it, I'm probably just going to buy it if it's a good price or at least look it up. Jeez Louise. Um, and that was a long time ago when I passed up an RG50. I do have one in the collection now. I was at a honey hole in Iowa. And this is Paul's Stomping Grounds, uh, Midwest Scotsman. And I've seen this book before and I passed it up. Is that a theme that I just pass up some of these books? But I knew it was there. And I knew really no one else digs here because it's kind of a secret. It's kind of a secret. It's not a comic shop. I'm not even going to talk about it because there's other books that I want to get from there. But this is Attack number five from Youthful Publications or Youthful, whatever. I'm not sure. Napoli might be the cover artist on this. And so it's nice atomic war cover. And I'll fight in tomorrow's war is the caption there. Really neat. So it's Attack number five from January 1953 or 54. I can't remember, and it's youthful publication. So I really like this one because of the, the soldiers there running. 
away from this atomic bomb or this atomic attack. Either way, there's a big old mushroom cloud. And I think the reason what, what drew me to this or what kind of opened my eyes to atomic magazines or atomic themed comics was Man Cave Comics. I definitely, um, he definitely talked about him and I really do appreciate him sharing his passion for those with me. And so I really was drawn to this when I saw it and I knew I had to go back for it. So this one was maybe 65 to $70. I know it was under $70 with tax, but I can't remember. Maybe a $63 asking price, just paid the asking price. So really great book. And the last one up, I got near Columbia, Missouri. So I travel all over the place everywhere and everywhere I go I try to look for comics in weird places this was an antique mall so not such a weird place but this baby is so high grade I want to get it cleaned and pressed because it could it, I mean it doesn't need it doesn't really need a pressing but it's just so high grade it's still in like the poly bag and it has the mask so this is Captain Britain number one very very high grade very very nice this is one of those ones where I've been looking for this one and the first appearance of Betsy Braddock, which I think is maybe number six or seven. Uh, don't quote me on that, as Master X would say. But this one is Captain Britain number one, first appearance of Captain Britain. Really, really awesome book and super high grade. I made sure that the mask was in there, and it is. And so I'm really happy about that. Uh, got this one for $60, $65 plus tax. So that's a book that I've always been looking for. Love these magazine style or sized books. I thought that one was really cool. So anyways, that is the last book in the haul. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscription button. Hit that bell to be notified when the next video is. Because like I said, there's a grail in this box, which I'm going to be opening right now for the next video. So hit that like button, hit that subscription button, uh, hit that bell to be notified, comment down below what you thought, and I will talk to you all on the next one. See you, bye.